Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today, we are going to talk about the determinants of health. Now, this is probably one of the most commonly asked long question or as a part of long question uh, in the theoretical exam. Before we begin, we need to know what is health. This definition was given by WHO or World Health Organization in the year 1948. And the definition says, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity. Also in recent years, the phrase, the ability to lead a socially and economically productive life was also included to amplify this definition. So it is ideal when we ask our student, we expect them to give the whole definition that is Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity to lead a socially and economically productive life. Now coming to the determinants of health, health is multifactorial. That means not a single factor uh, determine the status of health. There are different factors and they can act together or individually to determine the health status of a person. The factors which influence the health lie within the person, also externally in the society where the person lives. The factors interact and this interaction can sometimes be health promoting that means they, that can improve the health status or can also be deleterious that means it can degrade or can worsen the health status. Probably many of you have seen this image which is given in the book of Park or any standard textbook, the images are more or less quite same or quite similar. Uh, there are multiple factors or determinants you can see. For example, we have biological determinants, then behavioral, environmental, socioeconomic, health status, sociocultural factors, aging of the population, the advancement of science and technology, information and communication, gender equity and social justice, human rights, etc. So the, they can all be uh, part of either individual factors or uh, factors of the community level or family level or even society, etc. So these are the different determinants of health. We shall talk about the individual determinants and we shall start with the biological determinants. Now the physical as well as the mental characteristics of every person is different from each other and this is determined by the nature of his gene so the genetic material as well as the genetic structure at the time of conception so this is something that cannot be changed that is not in our hand it is predetermined even before we were born the genetic makeup is unique and it cannot be altered after conception. Just as I mentioned, this is non-modifiable. There are a lot of different diseases that can be of genetic origin. For example, chromosomal abnormalities, errors of metabolism, mental retardation, and some types of diabetes. <clears throat> so these things uh, are predetermined and they cannot be modified. So the biological determinants are in it. It is an intrinsic factor for the person and it is something we have to deal with because we cannot do anything about it. The next one is the behavioral as well as the socio-cultural condition. So lots of cultural and behavioral pattern and also the lifelong personal habits of a person can determine his health status. For example, whether the person is smoking or alcoholic, that means whether there is any addiction of history and different kind of lifestyles because health requires promotion of healthy lifestyle. If we follow healthy lifestyle, we are supposed to be uh, healthy. Whereas if we follow unhealthy lifestyle, lot of non-communicable diseases can develop. Some of the current health day problems 
uh, लाइक कोरोनरी हार्ट डिजीज ओबेसिटी लांग कैंसार ड्रग एडिक्शन डायबिटीज एसेट्रा आर एसोसिएटेड उथथ लाइफ स्टाइल चेन्जेस इन डेभलपिंग कान्ट्रीज जस्ट लाइक इंडिया द ट्रेडिशनल लाइफ स्टाइल स्टील पार्सिस्ट एंड बिकज अब दैट द रिस्क अफ इलनेस एंड डेथ आर कनेक्टेड उ लैक अफ सैनिटेशन पोर निूट्रिशन पार्सनल हाइजिन एलिमेंटरि ह्यूमैन हैबिट्स कस्टम्स एंड कलचारल पैटार्नस सो सीस इन द डेभलपिंग कान्ट्रीज पीपल स्टील फलो द ट्रेडिशनल कलचार्स एंड लाइफ स्टाइल दिस रिस्क फैक्टर्स आर स्टील पार्सिस्टिंग इन दिस कान्ट्रीज व्हाट आर द रिस्क फैक्टर्स लैक अफ सैनिटेशन दैट कैन लीड टू डिफारेंट इनफेक्शस डिजिजेस पोर निूट्रिशन कैन लीड टू मेल निूट्रिशन अंडर निूट्रिशन एसेट्रा पार्सनल हाइजिन एगेन Uh, infectious diseases can occur elementary human habits customs and cultural patterns etc there are many that can actually promote health so sometimes uh, some of the he healthy lifestyles can also promote health they can benefit our health status examples include adequate nutrition enough sleep so one must have adequate amount of sleep to lead a uh, normal life a healthy life also sufficient physical activity will help in reduction of body weight so obesity can be avoided and because of that lot of communicable diseases i'm sorry non communicable diseases like uh, hypertension diabetes coronary heart disease stroke etc can also be avoided so that is why we always promote healthy lifestyle next environment hippocrates was the first person to propose there is relation between uh, disease and the environment environment can be internal or external internal environment means uh, the every component of our body that means individual cells all the tissues the organs and the different systems because they have to work together harmoniously so that we can lead a healthy life if any of the organ is not functioning obviously we must have some kind of disease some kind of health problem so the internal environment which comprise the different tissues cells organs and system should all work in synchronized manner external environment are all those things that a person is exposed to so it is basically uh, the surrounding of the person it can be divided into physical biological and psychological components so we can have physical environment the biological environment and the psychosocial environment uh, it is also customary to talk about occupational environment that means the environment where a person works the socio economic environment and also the moral environment the environmental factors range from housing water supply psychosocial stress family structure through the social and economic support system to the organization of health and social welfare services in the community of course so the pattern of housing what kind of house the person is living in the surrounding of the housing the water supply because safe water supply is very important also the psychosocial stress what kind of uh, social stress or psychological stress a person has to endure on daily basis and there are different social and economic support system existing in the community and also different social welfare services are present so all this thing will also uh, determine the status of the external environment for the person next is socio economic condition let us talk about the economic status first economic progress is probably one of the most important factor in improving the health status of a country by reducing the morbidity increasing life expectancy that means people are now living for a longer period of time and also improving the quality of life that they are living the economic status determines the purchasing power standard of living and quality of life it is also an important factor in seeking health care because of course if a person has economic support economic stability he can opt for different investigations that may be required for his health condition sometimes poor people cannot afford a lot of investigations which are not available in the public sector or in the government hospitals where generally the investigations are for free but if these investigations are not available in the uh, public sector or government hospitals sometimes the patients are told or asked to 
get this investigation done from outside now this investigation may be a little bit uh, costly and if the person doesn't have enough money he will rather skip it because of that sometimes the diseases are not diagnosed or maybe even if the disease is diagnosed further management cannot be done accordingly so that is why this is also very important even though a person with economic stability can afford uh, investigation uh, treatment or intervention uh, that is not otherwise very cheap and cannot be afforded by a poor person it does not always mean that a person with economic stability is also a healthy person because we have seen people belonging to the upper socioeconomic status group for example the upper class or the upper middle class they lead a certain kind of lifestyle which are associated with a lot of non-communicable diseases like hypertension diabetes coronary heart uh, coronary heart diseases stroke obesity etc so that is why affluence can also be a contributory factor to different illnesses and diseases what about education if we look at the map the uh, world map or map of world and see all those countries having high rate of illiteracy they are also the same countries having high rate of poverty high rate of malnutrition ill health and also high death rates in the infant and the children so we can say that the level of education or educational status is also somehow related to the status of the health for that country what about occupation it has been seen that people who are unemployed show higher rate of ill health and death also if someone loses his job that means he loses his income as well as his status that can lead to some psychological and social stress so the mental health can also be affected otherwise employment in productive life uh, productive work uh, promotes health so that is why occupation is also important as it ensures the economic stability what about political system a country's political system is a big contributory factor to the health status of the same country often the main barriers to implement different health technologies are not technical but rather political there are certain decisions to be made for example the resource allocation the manpower policy choice of technology and the degree to which health services are made available and accessible to different segments of the society and these decisions are to be taken by the political system and it depends on their political will so this is why it is very important that there is full support or full cooperation from the political system of the country uh, for easily available and accessible different health services uh, for all group of people in the same country what about health services what is the purpose of health service it is to provide services that will help to improve the health status of the population now to have an effective health service it must reach the social periphery so not only in the towns or cities but also in the distant areas for example uh, difficult to reach areas uh, hilly areas tribal areas etc equitably distributed so that means everyone should get uh, access to the services accessible at a cost that a country and community can afford so it cannot be very costly it should be at a price that everyone can afford and socially acceptable so these are basically the different characteristics of primary healthcare that we shall discuss in our uh, future video someday for example immunization of children that will lead to prevention of lots of vaccine preventable diseases provision of safe water can lead to uh, reduction in the number of water borne diseases care of the pregnant women and children can help in reducing the maternal as well as the uh, newborn death in a country so all these health services should be available what about aging of the population aging means two thing if a population is aging that means now there are a lot of old age people that means the health system of that country is good it can diagnose the disease early and it can also cure it that is why people are uh, 
they are living for a longer period of time and more people are coming to the uh, age group of the uh, elderly people so that means there is less number of death in the earlier age so that shows that the healthcare system is good in that particular population also when there is aging it comes with lot of diseases the chronic diseases and the different disabilities which are obviously because of the aging process itself so there can be lot of health issues as well as mental problems uh, that is quite natural for the aging people what about gender first of all we can have some gender specific diseases that means certain disease which occur in one gender only uh like we can have cervical cancer in females only whereas prostate cancer in males only sometimes there are some diseases which are occur in both genders but more commonly in one gender like we can have the gallstone or colle cystitis also the hypothyroidism that can occur in both genders but they are more common in the females so that that is why uh, gender is a very important determinant of health but we are going to talk about something different here uh in india and in many developing countries where old day cultures and beliefs are still quite common not only in developing countries but pretty sure in developed countries also there is definite gender inequality when it comes to the health status of the uh, people uh, and that is why the global commission on women's health they drew up an agenda for action regarding the women health uh, and that covered lot of different aspects like the nutrition of the women their reproductive health the health consequences of the violence because gender specific violence especially against the women uh, are very common also aging lifestyle related condition and the occupational environment another very important thing because nowadays lots of uh, women's girls are employed okay so they are getting job but the environment they have to work in may not be very healthy may not be very cooperative to them and the, there are also lots of uh, violence or even assaults in the in the occupational or working environment that the girls have to face so that is why there uh, should be more awareness among the policy makers regarding the different issues of women health and these issues should also be considered while uh, developing different policies and plans uh, and they should be prioritized what about other factors we can also have some other factors for example the health related systems like food and agriculture education industry social welfare rural development as you can see these are not directly uh, health related but obviously they have some very important role uh, on the health status as well as adoption of different policies and economic and social fields that would assist in raising the standards of living uh, if people have higher standard of living obviously uh, that will benefit them this would include employment opportunities so more people can get uh, employed they can have jobs increased wages so that ensures the economic stability up to a certain extent prepaid medical programs and family support system so all this will directly or indirectly improve the health condition of a country so all these were the different determinants of health with this we conclude our session and if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and also share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends from other colleges we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description thank you take care and we shall see you in our next video